welcome to Kabartha Castle Museum and Art Gallery. My name is Chris and this is a video that's going to be looking into the history of this object beside me here because we get so many questions on a day-to-day -day basis as to how on earth Merthyr Tydfil's museum has ended up with a mummified human Egyptian head on display. I thought we'd do a video dedicated to explaining why on earth this is part of our collection and a bit about the history behind it. But before I get too into the history, what I want you to do is have a little guess first and foremost. Now this is obviously a mummified human head, but while I'm telling you the history, I want to see if you can guess whether it is a male or female that we are talking about, and I'll let you know at the end. But first and foremost, the head itself is around 2,500 years old and it is, contrary to a lot of people who come in here, yeah, who say, oh, is it real? Is that a fake? That's another popular question we get. It is real and we sent it off to Manchester in 2006 in Manchester University and so we know that it dates around about to 600 BCE and yeah, it is a perfectly preserved mummified human head. Now the reason why it's on display in Kavartha Castle is all to do with a famous person that lives lived in the town. I say famous, famous in his day, because he and his father owned the Merthyr Express newspaper, which at the time was one of the premier newspaper publications in Wales and arguably nationally across all of Britain. Harry Hartley Waite Southey was his name, and he would eventually, after his father passed away, run the Merthyr Express, but he was interested in cultures from all over the world, and particularly in the Middle East. He would travel extensively through Turkey and Egypt and other parts in the Middle East and he would be just absorbed by the culture and the style and the artistry that he would see there. So much so that he wanted to bring it back to Merthyr Tydfil to show his fellow townspeople because he knew all too well that a lot of people weren't as lucky as he in having disposable income enough to travel around the world to see these things because this was in a time and an age where people couldn't turn on a TV and see these things. They couldn't pick up a book or afford to pick up a book that detailed Egyptian art and history and they certainly unless they were going down to the British Museum in London they wouldn't see physically these things right in front of them to appreciate the age the culture and the beauty of the ancient Egyptians. So Saudi travelled to Egypt in 1901 and he was totally and utterly besotted by Egypt and so much so that he travelled all the way through here for six months. He ended up in the Valley of the Kings where as many of you probably know lots of pharaohs and well-to-do people in ancient Egypt were buried in the Valley of the Kings. He went first to the tomb of Seti I and travelled deep into that tomb, but even the heat back then was so intense in the Valley of the Kings that he couldn't even make it right the way to the end, because this is one of the longest tombs in the Valley of the Kings. And so when he came out, he was a little bit disappointed, not because he didn't make it to the end, but because it was already a tourist attraction. Even by 1901, Seti I's tomb had gates and stewards on the outside, and many of the discovered tombs had that. Saudi saw himself as a bit of an explorer and adventurer so he was keen to see something that away from the tourist trade and so he asked his guide who was a small boy named Abdullah who was guiding a donkey full of Saudi stuff and the donkey's name was Napoleon and literally they would go through the Valley of the Kings and all over Egypt and he would be his guide and carry his stuff. So he asked his guide to take him to some tombs that weren't part of the tourist trade really and so he took him to some more kind of unknown tombs where they would dig deep beneath the soil and go on their bellies into these old tombs and investigate the grave sites inside. But also when he came out of one of these sites, Abdul turned to him and said, would you like to see some mummy remains? And so Saudi instantly said, yes. And so they went even deeper into the Valley of the Kings and they found a mud hut. And inside this mud hut was a group of people that would be known in no other way other than tomb robbers. Their stock and trade was to find undiscovered tombs, go into them, take everything of value and then sell it. And so Southey went in and he couldn't afford a lot of the pottery and a lot of the other things that were in this hut. But he did see an interesting pile and that pile was a pile of mummy remains because the mummy parts and the parts of human remains were discarded and they were just piled up in the corner of this mud hut and no one really cared for them because they couldn't sell them. And so Southey went over to this pile and wanting to get all aspects of ancient Egyptian history to take back home with him, he decided to purchase some mummy parts. He picked 
picked up some feet and some hands and purchased them and then he picked up two heads and he looked at them for a while and decided one was happier than the other and he purchased it and brought it back to Merthyr with him and that is this head that's on display here right now this is the exact head the Saudi in 1901 travelled into the Valley of the Kings met the tomb robbers and brought it back to Merthyr with him on returning to Merthyr when he got to the town one of the very first things he did was write to the local subscription library and he asked them if they wanted him to put the display on of everything he had brought back and they agreed and he displayed these objects mummy remains and everything we've got on display here in the library in Merthyr and then years later when Cavartha Castle Museum was established the collection naturally passed to be here until Saudi's death in 1917 when he bequeathed his whole Egyptian collection to us in his will a lot of this stuff was actually in Saudi's house in King Edward Villas just scattered around his house for many years until his father could eventually bring it here and build a custom case to house this amazing collection of over 130 ancient Egyptian objects in Cavartha Castle. This mummified human head is actually a female for those of you who guessed female, you are correct. On further testing at Manchester, they discovered that this mummified human head actually had blonde hair, which suggested that it was not of Egyptian descent, because it was very rare for an Egyptian of this period to actually have blonde hair. And so they believed that this is possibly a European or a person of European descent being mummified, which is incredibly rare to find, really. And so here it remains on display for many years to come, really. But I hope you've enjoyed looking into the history of the mummy's head the Harry Waite Hartley Southey brought back to Merthyr Tidville back in 1901. Thank you very much for watching. Hoi revaur.